Hey, Jody here. Today we're talking about TIG welding restarts. You're welding along and you have to stop for whatever reason and you have to start again. That's a restart and you'd like to be able to make your restarts in such a way that you can't really tell. So if you have to stop five times even in a six inch run, it looks pretty much like there's one continuous bead. That's the goal anyway and that's what we're going to be talking about today. I'm going to try to show some real up close shots of the restart and describe what's going on so that you'll have a method in your in your mind on making consistent restarts. Also I'm going to talk about something called the three second rule. Let's get into it. What I have here is a piece of six inch long 11 gauge cold rolled steel. That's roughly an eighth of an inch thick or 125 thousandths thick, 3.2 millimeters thick. I'm using 1 16th, 1 1.6 diameter filler metal. And when I talked about that three second rule, that means I want to get a puddle established and get moving within three seconds. We'll, we'll talk about it a little bit more as we go. I'm also trying to pull that top toe of that filler metal all the way up to the corner to make this a full fillet weld. I'm trying not to leave any little chewed off areas there. Well, I'll stop here in a minute, taper off. It'll only take about a second or two to taper off because with mild steel, it's just not crack sensitive. You don't have to taper off very slow. Other materials that are crack sensitive, you do have to taper off a lot slower. There's the crater. That's where we're going to restart. And I'm going to view that as if it was a target and a bullseye, sort of. So I'm going to aim at the center of it with my arc. I'm going to light up on the center of that thing with a nice, fresh, sharp electrode. And I'm going to try to get that puddle grown within three seconds and get moving. I'm going to give you a real close-up look at that. We're going to take a look at it and examine it. Light up. One, two, three, and then move and go. And that's really all there is to it. Here's a slow motion. Light up in the center of the puddle. Increase the puddle by pressing the foot pedal until the puddle matches the previous size and then move and dab just like you resuming your travel speed. We'll take us we'll take several more looks at this because I'm going to stop about five times on this little six inch run. Just like always good practice is a nice tight arc length keep the hot tip of that rod shielded with the argon gas things will go a lot better. So there's another stop. Stop. Let the post flow do its thing for at least probably five to eight seconds on carbon steel. Probably a little longer on stainless steel. A little, lot less on aluminum. You don't have to worry about it on aluminum. Here we are again, doing the same thing over again. I'm using a little gas lens. It's called a stubby gas lens kit. It's on a 17 air-cooled torch. At the very end of this video, I'll give a little one-minute commercial on that thing, but it'll, I'll save it to the end. You can see it's doing a pretty good job of keeping that bead fairly shiny. All right, here we go again. Light up right in the bullseye, grow the puddle to where it was before, and then continue on. And it doesn't matter if it's a lap joint, a butt joint, a T-joint, same thing applies. Now with stainless steel, you probably want to get the thing going within two seconds or less. Stainless steel heat builds up and then you can't outrun it. But with carbon steel, a three second rule seems to work out pretty well. Aluminum might take a little bit longer due to the thermal conductivity of it, but you get the point. One more time, light up in the middle, press the pedal down, get the puddle to, to match the crater and then move on. I thought it was one more time, but I guess we're going to do it once again. Repetition is the way is the way to practice and learn. Sometimes getting a lot of different looks at something is beneficial too when you're when you're trying to learn a little certain welding technique. This should about wrap it up. This will take it all the way out to the end. And normally you would never stop five times, probably wouldn't stop five times on a little six inch run like this, but uh, sometimes you just have to stop and it's great to be able to make a decent restart. Okay, like I said, we're going to have a little commercial here talking a little bit more about the stubby gas lens. Here we go. Standard style cups that come with TIG torches work okay until you need to extend the electrode out 
very far at all. Like anything past three eighths of an inch and you're kind of questionable. Here I've got it extended out seven sixteenths of an inch with 20 CFH and a number six cup. And you can see it's just not doing well. The stainless is getting oxidized. It's not flowing like it should. It's a ropey bead. It's not what you want to see on a stainless steel weld. You want to see that thing shiny. All right, I'm going to extend this electrode out a little bit further on a 17 torch. This is a stubby gas lens kit with the same CFH of argon flow and the puddle is just flowing a lot better. When you're free from oxidation, the puddle flows nicer, takes less heat to flow the puddle, looks nicer. This is a CK17 flex head. One of my favorite torches, one of the most common torches. The cups and hardware that come with it are okay, but we can do a whole lot better. See what I mean? Isn't that better? Not only does it feel better, in most applications it works better. Let me show you why this is the best stubby gas lens kit on the market. I've included Furic gas lenses with an O-ring groove, 1 16th through 1 8th, and they allow you to use not only ceramic cups that you normally would use with a 920 style torch, but by slipping the O-ring on, you can use the Furic clear cups. And that makes for a super versatile kit that you can build on. A size 4 is great for flash tacking, also great for a Saturday afternoon when the welding supply is closed and you're almost out of argon. Number 5 is great for full penetration welds on aluminum. There's a reason why a lot of highly skilled aluminum welders prefer a number five cup, whether gas lens or standard. A number six cup comes in clutch sometimes for walking the cup on a single pass fillet weld like this. I have found a number six cup is a great all around cup for a whole lot of aluminum jobs. It limits the etch zone just a little bit, kind of directs the heat, but does give you enough coverage for a longer stick out sometimes. A number seven is a good all around cup for steel, lets me use a longer stick out, a number eight is great for stainless steel, especially when you need a longer stick out. You can use a much longer stick out with an eight gas lens than you can a standard collet body cup. This is a standard number eight cup, standard collet body that comes with most air cooled 17 style torches. The most common torch out there that comes with say a 200 amp machine. This is sped up four times, but I'm just showing you with a 7 16 stick out at 20 CFH, results are less than perfect. It's gray, the puddle swam around on me, got oxidized. Same stick out, went to a stubby gas lens, number eight cup, same gas, way, way better. You can also stick a, a Jazzy 10 ceramic onto a stubby gas lens, same gas flow, same stick out, and get even better results. And that's why I almost always use a stubby gas lens setup with either an eight cup or something larger like a Furic ceramic cup instead of the standard ones.